Okay, I think it's about time to start. Hi, I'm Robert Foss. I work for Collabora, as you may have guessed. Uh, and uh, I was not named after free and open source software. It's actually my mother's last name, too. She does not write software, not at all. Uh, either way, um, working for, for Collabora means that I work on open source for a living. I mostly do Linux graphics work, and lately that has led me to do a fair amount of Android work. And this talk is going to be about where Android meets the, the mainline graphics stack. Uh, we're going to cover a bit of ground here. Uh, but before we go into the, de the details, let's have a look at what we're actually going to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, Android graphics stack and what it looks like, and how it compares to the mainline graphics stack, and where we are now with this work, and why all of this stuff actually matters. Uh, so uh, what does the Android graphics stack look like? Uh, this is sort of roughly it. Um, it's uh, a slight simplification, but these are the basic layers. Uh, all the pieces that we care about are here. Uh, on top, of course, we have the apps. Uh, this is the stuff uh, we really, oh, sorry. This is stuff we really care about. It's the whole point. Like, that's what our users want. Um, and below, we have Surface Flinger, um, which is the glue that lets different applications uh, draw pixels to the same screen. Uh, it organizes the layers that different applications submit to it. Uh, and uh, this is uh, an example of what it does. Uh, it's an ordinary Android desktop, uh, and it contains a handful of different elements. Each of the different elements is provided by a different application. So if we look on top, there's the status bar. Uh, and to the right, we have the navigation bar. Uh, and if you notice in that corner, they uh, sort of overlap a little bit. Um, these layers are often transparent. Um, and the majority of what you're seeing is the background layer, um, on top of which all of the other layers are rendered. So these layers have a depth order, um, and they're just stacked on top of each other. Uh, the process of, of rendering this is, uh, is called uh, composing layers, and uh, it means just stacking layers on top of each other. Uh, these layers and the composition of them is communicated through the HWC2 uh, API. And below Surface Flinger, we have the, the non-kernel parts of the graphics driver. Uh, for various reasons like security and convenience, uh, graphics drivers don't entirely live in, in kernel space. Uh, and at the bottom, oh, sorry. Uh, this is also where OpenGL and Vulkan and memory allocators and stuff like that is, is implemented. Uh, and in the case of Android, it's also where the HWC2 API is implemented. Uh, and at the bottom of the stack, we find the kernel, of course. Um, so um, what's the HWC2 API then? Uh, it's an API to, uh, uh, that is used uh, to communicate between Surface Flinger and the hardware drivers. Uh, it's, uh, it allows applications to submit layers uh, to be composed onto the screen. Each of these layers is a buffer with some properties uh, attached to it. Um, it also provides some abstractions for graphical objects. Uh, it's maybe not all that interesting, but it's very useful. Uh, and the whole idea of, of having the HWC2 uh, product or API to begin with is to allow offloading work from the GPU uh, onto specialized hardware. Uh, display hardware um, has support for, for composing uh, a handful of uh, layers, maybe uh, uh, four. Um, four is a typical number. More uh, is certainly possible, but it's a matter of diminishing returns. Um, so this display hardware can compose layers uh, faster and more energy efficiently than a GPU can. and uh, this, of course, frees the GPU up to doing like actual GPU stuff, like OpenGL or playing games or you know whatever you like. Uh, so doing this work more efficiently means that you can run your GPU faster or for longer, or your CPU faster or for longer, for that matter, which really matters in the mobile space. Uh, so if that's the Android stack, what does the mainline stack look like? Look like? Uh, 
it sort of looks like this. Uh, this is the proprietary part uh, that you would expect to see on an Android device. Uh, these are the drivers from Qualcomm, ARM, or whomever your GPU vendor is. And for the Android platform, these drivers implement the HWC2 API. Uh, so what's the open source equivalent of, of, of that blob then? Uh, apart from just being a GPU driver, it also has to implement the HWC2 API. And uh, the HWC2 API is not used for most uh, Linux graphics stack. It's basically only used for the Chromium OS one uh, and the Android one. So it's not what you'd see on, on your Ubuntu or your Fedora or whatever. Uh, the part that implements uh, this API on the open source side is called DRM Hardware Composer. And it's a shim between drivers and Surface Flinger. Um, all it really does is to implement the HWC2 API on top of the mainline graphics stack. And uh, it was developed by uh, Google, mainly by uh, Sean Paul over there, uh, and Zach Reisner. And it was initially intended to, uh, to be used only for uh, Chromium OS, which is the OS that runs on your Chromebooks. Um, if we have a deeper look into the driver, we can see that it is, it is implemented in a few parts. Uh, DRM being the kernel subsystem that handles graphics and display hardware. Uh, LibDRM is the user space library that simplifies talking to DR the DRM subsystem. And uh, lastly, there's Mesa, which implements uh, OpenGL, OpenCL, and, and so on. Um, but there's one more thing. Uh, there is, uh, uh, there's Graloc. We're getting into the details at this point, but uh, uh, it's an important part. Uh, this module handles uh, uh, buffer allocations and associating uh, properties to buffers. Uh, properties like uh, color format, uh, buffer sizes, for example. Um, there are a few implementations of, of Graloc, and they're slightly different. Um, there's uh, GBM Graloc, which is fairly commonly used, which was written by Rob Herring. There's uh, DRM Graloc and uh, Mini GBM. Uh, Mini GBM being used in Chromium OS, uh, I believe. Uh, so uh, hopefully this gives you an idea of, of what or where DRM Hardware Composer uh, fits in. But what does it actually do? Uh, it uh, receives layers through the HWC2 API. And each layer contains a buffer and some properties like a position, uh, cropping information, uh, damage information, uh, damage being uh, parts of, of a layer that has changed uh, since the last frame, uh, which is useful to, to have if you uh, uh, want to optimize your display uh, uh, stack, uh, which just lets you do less work. Basically, if there is no damage, you can just use the old stuff. That's good. Uh, so uh, when you have all these layers, uh, you'll have to decide how to send them to the hardware. And display hardware is only able to support like four layers, basically. Uh, some more, some less. And uh, adding more is a matter of diminishing returns. So what happens when we have more layers than the hardware supports? Uh, this is fairly common. Um, and what we basically have to do is uh, squash some layers together until we reach the number of layers that is supported by the hardware. Uh, this is done through uh, OpenGL or Vulkan. Uh, hopefully, Vulkan soon. And, and choosing which layers and how to squash them uh, uh, leaves you uh, some room for optimizations. Like maybe you'll want to squash the layers that are uh, very small or, uh, uh, yeah, uh, so that you'll be able to do the least amount of work uh, possible uh, on, uh, on, uh, on uh, the less energy efficient uh, implementation of, of, of uh, compositing. Um, so uh, lastly, when we've organized all this stuff, uh, we uh, have to map each layer to a DRM plane. So DRM planes are an abstraction for the same thing as layers, but they're just called different things. They're called planes instead of layers for whatever reason. Um, they do the exact same thing. So it's a buffer attached to some properties, and they're what's fed to the, to the graphics hardware uh, for, for output. Um, 
for example, you likely want to put a, a hardware composer um, layer or cursor layer on the DRM uh, cursor plane, just so that uh, it'll be handled in the most uh, optimal way possible. Uh, hardware oftentimes have fast path or has fast paths for certain uh, cases, and having a cursor plane is, is pretty common. So uh, having covered uh, what this stuff is, uh, let's have a look at uh, what the current status is. Um, why did this happen now? Um, well, there, there are a few reasons. Um, DRM Hardware Composer has been around for a while, and uh, uh, about, I think, uh, about a year ago, uh, no, almost two years ago, uh, the revision was bumped from, from one to two. Uh, and uh, uh, revision two requires synchronization support which means that you can sort of wait for uh, operations to be carried out on, uh, on a buffer. And when they're done, you can just uh, be, uh, be notified that uh, the buffer is ready for you to use now, uh, which uh, simplifies uh, stuff overall. Um, and in, in order to do this, uh, implement hard Hardware Composer 2, we needed uh, buffer synchronization support, which has uh, uh, which was originally implemented in Android kernels, and then later uh, last year uh, moved to mainline Linux. Um, and that work was carried out by Gustavo Paduan, um, a colleague of mine. And uh, this uh, is now supported by, by some, not all, uh, GPU drivers. Uh, and the second part as to why, why now, is uh, uh, the ADF. Uh, the Atomic Display Framework. Uh, Hardware Composer 2 requires synchronization, and synchronization support is only provided by one of the uh, Linux kernel uh, display frameworks. So KMS does not support it, but AMS or A ADF does. Uh, and this is basically what all of the modern uh, uh, GPU drivers use. So it's not very uncommon. Uh, so does this stuff even work? Uh, and the answer is yes, on a few platforms. Uh, for example, the IMX6, uh, which is a very common platform in the embedded space. Uh, it uses a Vivante GPU. Uh, there are a few flavors of these GPUs, but the GC3000 has full uh, Android support. And it's been developed, uh, or the open source driver has been developed by Christian Schmeiner, uh, Lucas Stack, and Vladimir Vanderlaan. Um, so now there exists a high-quality driver for Vivante GPUs, and it's called Ethnaviv. And if you're curious about it, you should uh, uh, try running it. It works really well. Um, and if it doesn't, uh, uh, Christian, Lucas, or Vladimir are pretty great to talk to, so just file your complaints with them. <laughs> um, there's also uh, the DB410C. Uh, this is a platform uh, supplied by Qualcomm. It's uh, um, and, uh, and cell phone uh, platform that has been repurposed. It runs the, uh, or has the Android 306 GPU, uh, which runs the Freedrino drivers, uh, which were written by the, the driver wizard, uh, Rob Clark. Um, there's also the DB820C, uh, uh, which is another more modern uh, platform supplied by Qualcomm. It is under active development, and support is being mainlined for it, but it's maybe not there fully yet. Uh, it has a, an Adreno 560 GPU, and that is also supported by the Freedrino drivers. Uh, and, and lastly, there's the Hi-Key 960. Uh, it's based on the Kirin 960 SoC, uh, which has a Mali uh, G71 GPU. Uh, the Mali G71 uh, uh, GPU does not have any functional open source drivers for it yet. Um, there's an effort to write these drivers, but it's still uh, the early days. Uh, the G71 hardware is internally called uh, Bifrost by, uh, by ARM. And uh, there's a project called BiOpenly that is uh, intending to open source uh, these drivers uh, for that specific architecture. Uh, however, uh, there not being any open source drivers does not prevent us from using DRM Hardware Composer. So there's an effort uh, towards uh, uh, bringing a platform up and running uh, based on that. Uh, so this is the new section of the talk. Um, previously, uh, or 
the DRM hardware composer project came about from the uh, Chromium OS project need needing it. Um, because of this, DRM hardware composer was hosted on the Chromium OS Garrett, which was good, uh, but maybe not ideal. Um, with the help of Jean Paul, uh, the project has now been moved to uh, freedesktop.org. And development is now done on, uh, on the DRA Devil mailing list, which is how other Linux graphics projects are developed. So thanks to Google and Jean Paul but also freedesktop.org uh, for hosting us. Uh, so this is the last point of the talk. Why does any of this matter? Uh, we use open source software not because it feels good, but because it is better. And a very specific point as to it being better is the long-term support. Uh, if you deliver a product, some products like embedded devices, for example, uh, they require serious, serious long-term support. These devices aren't, de aren't replaced every year or every fifth year, so, so hardware support has to be available for a very long time. Uh, 20 years of support is not unusual, unreasonable for some applications. It really does depend on your field. Um, and with open source drivers, um, support can be provided by anyone. So when you develop one, one of these serious embedded uh, uh, product, you yourself will be obligated to support the products for a long time, which means that you have to make sure that you have the ability to fix issues for a long time. And if you're using a proprietary driver, your only option uh, when it comes to support is uh, uh, going to the vendor and asking for it. And maybe they, they will say yes, but they will surely charge you for it. Uh, additionally, long-term long support runs the risk of a vendor disappearing or ending their support for, for a product for any number of reasons, like promoting a newer product or going out of business. Like Many things can happen, especially in, in such a long uh, time span. Uh, we also want to push the industry forward uh, towards open source. I say we, and I think it's true for all of us in the open source community both for personal reasons, like it being neat and giving us warm, fuzzy feelings, but, but also for professional reasons. It gives us more options and enables us to do more. Uh, so if you're a GPU manufacturer, DRM hardware composer allows you to spend less on drivers. You won't have, have to uh, um, do as much testing. Your Linux driver will be your Android driver. And additionally, you'll be able to leverage the community or the common code that is already maintained and high quality like uh, Mesa and, and kernel DRM give you a lot of these things for free. Like the, the, the atomic display framework from a DRM gives you a really good base to build your driver upon. Uh, and Mesa gives you much, much of what you'll need for Vulkan or, or uh, OpenGL support. Uh, Mesa and DRM are also very well tested. Many drivers are, all, are already based on both and have shipped for, for many years. So lots of even the rarest edge cases have been found and fixed. Um, optimizations that are applied to other drivers may also apply to yours. Maybe you won't even have to, do, have to commit any changes at, at all. It might be in the common code. Or in some cases, you'll be able to do very similar things to what the other drivers are doing and uh, uh, reap the benefits without having to do all that much work just a smaller amount of work. Uh, yeah, thank you. That's it. Does anyone have any questions? So the evaluation boards you presented, mm -hmm. Do all of them now run Android on a mainline kernel? Is, is that? Uh, the DB410C does. The IMX6 does. Um, the 820 does not run mainline at all yet, as far as I understand it. Um, yeah. And it's getting there. Um, and the high key 960, I'm, I'm a lot less sure about its status, uh, honestly. Uh, I know that it's being actively worked on, so that's certainly the goal. Okay, so definitive yes for the two mature ones. Yes. <laughs> and the other ones are up and coming. Okay. Yes. Great, thank you. Uh, you cannot buy the 820C yet, but that's coming.
Hi. Um, is there an overhead in going essentially through two graphic stacks, um, both in, in time and in memory usage? So n none of these uh, um, layers are copied, like only references are, are moved. So I'm sure there's some amount of overhead, but I would call it ne negligible. It's not like uh, co copying entire buffers around. That's all handled by, by Graloc that provides us that for free. And uh, a follow-up question, um, imagination technologies, GPUs, any progress on that that you know of? Uh, not that I know of. Uh, as far as I know, uh, no one dares to try. Uh, yeah, I thought that would be the answer. Any other questions? Um, with the recent release of Android 8, uh, the driver model has changed through the stuff that uh, announced in Project Trouble. Does yep. that affect this picture at all? Uh, it does affect uh, this uh, solution uh, a little bit. Um, most of this un uh, Project Trouble stuff is over what we're doing. So uh, the layer split that it sort of introduces uh, is not in the middle of what we're doing. It's all like on top of us. So it, it's not that bad. Uh, it's no worse than moving between any other Android versions. And also, I might add that um, um, I think uh, Android 8 is, is up and running. Uh, Rob Herring, I think, has, uh, has it up and running. Um, would it work with uh, closed source uh, OpenGL drivers? Uh, yes. There's nothing preventing you from using it with uh, closed source drivers. Mm -hmm. Then I think it might be work with Renaza's hardware. OK. Yeah, I'd certainly be open to uh, discussing that further. It's very interesting. Uh, I have a question. Uh, why did the Android community run away from X and Wayland? I can't answer that. <laughs> uh, I, I think they had a, a, a quicker pace. Basically, they want to ship stuff immediately. Um, so this hardware compositing stuff um, is uh, a hugely power-saving feature, and it's something that you really want in, on Android. And I don't think anyone was prepared to wait for Wayland to be prepared and ready and have good uh, um, hardware composition support. All right, no more questions? Oh, one there. What are the chances of us ever seeing a mobile phone with an open stack? Uh, I think the uh, uh, Purism uh, uh, phone that uh, just sort of cleared uh, uh, crowdfunding uh, will use something. I'm not en entirely sure that they'll use uh, DRM hardware composer, but I would assume so. Uh, John? So we did ship. DRM Hardware Composer on the Pixel C tablet, but it's using NVIDIA's vendor driver for GL. So half. It's a start. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think that's it for me. Uh, thanks, everyone.